been five days since four University of Idaho students were found dead inside their home just off campus and still very little details have been released about what happened that night. But here's what we know as of this afternoon. On Sunday, just before noon, someone called 911 to report an unconscious person at a home on King Road in Moscow. That's where police found the four victims, Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonsalves. We know there were two other roommates in the home at the time of the murders, and when police got there, they were not hurt, and police say they are cooperating. Moscow police wouldn't go so far, though, as to call them witnesses. And yesterday, the coroner's office released the autopsies and found all four were stabbed to death with a knife early Sunday morning. Police have not found a suspect or suspects and don't have any people of interest right now. An investigative reporter, Morgan Romero, joins us live here on the News at 4. Morgan, I know you've been digging into this. What have you learned? Yeah, we did learn today, Shira, that the Latah County coroner believes it's likely that at least some of the four victims were asleep at the time. She she wouldn't specify which of the four victims. We also know that this happened in the early morning hours of Sunday. That is confirmed. The coroner tells Seven Investigates bed sheets were taken from the home for testing, but she couldn't speak to any defensive wounds or the specific time of death on Sunday morning. Police put out a clearer picture of the hours leading up to the attack. They released a timeline and the locations of where all four victims were before they were murdered at their home on King Road in Moscow. This horrific attack on four college students happened less than a mile from the University of Idaho campus. Sororities and fraternities and their out of houses are mostly centralized in this area. New information from Idaho State Police reveals two of the victims, Ethan Chapin and Zana Kernodal, were together Saturday night, November 12th. They went to a Sigma Chi fraternity party across from their home on King Road from 8 to 9 p.m. The other two victims, Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan, were at the Corner Club on Main Street. It's about a mile and a half away from the home on King Road. Police say they were there from around 10 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. After leaving the bar, the girls went to the grub truck just down Main Street from the corner club. It's about a six minute walk. They're seen in a video from the food truck, ordering food around 1.40 Sunday morning. U of I students tell us it's a common weekend routine to go from the corner club to the food truck. Idaho State Police says all four victims were back at the King Road house, a little more than a mile from the food truck, by 1.45 a.m. Sunday, November 13th. What unfolded after that is unclear. It wasn't until noon on Sunday, police received a call of an unconscious person. When they got to the home on King Road, they found the four victims, Ethan, Zanna, Kaylee, and Maddie, dead. They confirm all four were stabbed early Sunday morning. The Latah County coroner tells us all the victims could have been killed with the same knife or a very similar knife. Police say they haven't yet found the weapon. And during the only and first news conference held earlier this week, reporters asked Moscow police about that video from the food truck that I mentioned. It's circulating all over social media. Moscow Police Chief James Fry says this Twitch video is helping give them the time and space of where Maddie and Kaylee were leading up to their deaths. Hello? In this live stream from the grub truck, you see the girls walk into the frame and up to the food truck. It appears they're with a young man, the one in the hat and dark jacket. Here, you can see him put his hood on. He hangs back several feet behind the girls as they order from the food truck. He then follows Kaylee and Maddie after they order and stands right next to them. It looks like he never ordered any food, but you can see him talking to other people there. Several minutes later, the girls grab their food, take a picture, laugh and talk to each other, and quickly walk away. One of the people the young man is talking to points out that the girls left. He throws up his hand, waits a moment, and then appears to walk after them. You see him wave at the girls and then walk a separate direction. This recording shows all three are at the food truck for about 10 minutes. And police say Kaylee and Madison were home just minutes later by about 1.45. Their home is a little more than a mile from the grub truck. A University of Idaho student who says he's friends with the victims told us this young man was with the girls at the corner club before this. ISP says authorities contacted the young man in the video and they interviewed him as part of the investigation. They are not labeling him as a suspect or person of interest at this time. Again, police say they have not identified a person or persons of interest or a suspect in this investigation. But anyone near these areas who saw anything suspicious has surveillance video or can provide any critical information about this and can help the investigation is really asked to 
call the tip line. That number is there on your screen, 208-883-7180. You can also now email that email address on your screen, tipline at ci.mosco.id.us. Yeah, that really painted a better, clearer picture for a lot of us, but I know still so many questions out there. Claiming for days there was no threat to the community, police in the college town of Moscow, Idaho, now acknowledge the public may not be safe, with no arrests made in the killing of these four college students. We cannot say that there's no threat to the community, and as we have stated, please stay vigilant. Investigators now revealing all four friends, ages 20 and 21, were stabbed inside this off-campus house, which was home to one of the victims, Police have no suspects. The police were stabbed with a knife. No weapon has been located at this time. Are you able to tell whether the same weapon was used on all four victims? No, I'm not able to look at that and hopefully collect all this evidence for us. Two of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan, were seen ordering at this late night food truck, laughing and taking pictures just hours before their deaths. They were seen downtown, and so really, uh, if any of the neighbors uh, in the area happen to have any relevant footage, uh, that's something that we'd love to see. Authorities say two other female roommates were home at the time of the attack. Officials are not confirming if the roommates saw anything, only saying the two are cooperating with the investigation. Police calling it a targeted attack, saying there was no sign of forced entry. One other mystery, police are not saying why the first call to police was around noontime, about eight hours after the murders, mm -hmm. and they would not reveal who called 911. Mm -hmm. The sister of one of the victims says she's frustrated at the pace of the investigation. Frustration now comes from having lost some very critical first 48 now 72 hours i don't know if my sisters wanted to be buried i don't know if they wanted to be cremated i don't know if they wanted white roses or red roses and that will forever haunt me but i do know that they want justice this crime has affected all of us the families the university of idaho the community we still believe it's a targeted attack, but the reality is, is there's still a person out there who committed four horrible, horrible crimes. I will tell you, we are looking at everyone. Um, we are every tip we get, every lead we get. There's no one that we're not going to talk to. There's no one we're not going to interview. There's no one that we're not going to look into. We also learned the killings happened early Sunday morning. Investigators did not find any sign of forced entry into the home or a weapon. Chief Bry says two roommates were also home during the attack, but were not hurt. He could not call them witnesses and also couldn't tell us why it took so long for someone to call 911. Chief Bry says investigators are still working out a timeline of what happened. They could tell us two of the students had been at a party and the other two had been at a bar that night. The Spokane County Medical Examiner confirmed with us they have finished the autopsy of all four bodies. They sent that information over to the Lake Town County Coroner, who will now be able to officially declare manner and cause of death. Now the university is telling us what they're doing to keep students safe on campus. The University of Idaho's Dean of Students says they have increased campus security patrols as well as security escorts. Those are available to students 24 hours a day. They also have drop-in counseling, and they say students have used this since the death. The dean said they support students who decide to leave early for Thanksgiving break. In the meantime, the Pullman Police Department is giving a series of safety tips. They're reminding people in the community to stay vigilant and to be aware of their surroundings. They're also giving the reminder, if you see something, say something. Now all over the country, thoughts and prayers are coming in as people remember the lives of those poor students who were killed. Yeah, the poor students were 20-year-old Ethan Chicken, a freshman from Conway, Washington, 20-year-old Santa Carlota, a junior from Coast Falls, 21-year-old Madison Bogan, a senior from Fort Wayne, and 21-year-old Kaylee Consalves, a senior from Rock Creek. Students gathered at Fort Wayne Independence Point last night to honor their memory. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We truly appreciate you coming together as a community and honoring these people.